welcome back or welcome to another episode of the Success Times Happiness Podcast. I am your host, Richard Thompson. Today is a solo episode, um, so sit down, get ready. We are talking about the importance of leaning on others in your team, in your network to help you build and achieve your success. Hopefully, there are some good things you can take away from this episode and you can implement into your life to build some wonderful success in the future. Let's get into it. One thing that I became aware of very quickly um, with Ultraman, with building online business, with, with business in general, and I think life in general, is that to succeed, you need people around you, full stop. And in fact, the greater the quality of people around you, the almost it's almost like a rising tide lifts all boats. And they've said in the past, a lot of people say that, you know, if you want to be healthier, you need to hang around healthier people. If you want to be uh, more wealthy in however you wish to define that, you want to hang around with people who are more wealthy in that in that space uh, than you. It, it lifts, the, the tide lifts everyone up to a higher standard. Now, I certainly understood and, and got that, the idea of teamwork uh, through Ultraman as a really, really prime example of that you just can't do it alone. It was, it's a sport that literally requires, to, it's a mandatory obligation to have a team in, in the back, car, in, in the support car behind you doing everything for you. And you're just principally dealing with what you have to do as an athlete. One of the biggest takeaways from that when it comes to building team is to I mean, the, the analogy is find your weaknesses and get a team, someone to fill those weaknesses, which is obviously, you know, rudimentary. But what I understood as well is that you need to look at it as a team objective and you might be good at three things. And two of those things can be done by other people, maybe better than you, maybe not. But you need to always look at this whole equation of what is in the best interest of the team, not just what is in the best interest of uh, for you, I guess. So you see a lot in business, people working, I guess, in the business, not necessarily on the business as much as they should. And that's because they are too focused on what they're, you know, doing all the things they know that they're good at individually, rather than looking at, well, the team itself as an, as an entity could actually really improve if I let go of a couple of things that I'm good at delegate, get good team members in to fill those roles. Not just the weakness, the things that I'm I'm poor at, but the things that I'm also very good at, get people to do those roles. So then you can focus on what the one thing that will propel the team. And that's your one goal. That's, that's your jigsaw piece for the overall team outcome. And then you do that and you give that autonomy to the team to do those other roles. And you realize that by you holding on to too many responsibilities or too many roles actually hinders the overall output of the overall um, success of the team. And one thing that I took away from is that as well is that no matter what we're doing, whether it's building a loving household, whether it's uh, having a successful and productive work environment, whether it's Ultraman, whether it's your sport, starting a business, creating whatever you're doing, it all comes down to obviously building a team. You can't do anything by yourself. Nothing that has been created, invented, or any no success in the world, in the history of the world has been created by one person. It's a complete team. But to understand that no matter what you're doing, whether it's whether you're at home, whether you're building widgets at work, whether you're uh, what, whatever it is, it's a people business because you're relying on human resources. You're, you need people to help. And so a great example was um, the Microsoft example. And, and I've talked about this in, in corporate speaking spots that I've done in the past. Sati Nadala, who was the CEO of Microsoft, he took over in 2014. And the stock at that time was on, the, on a real decline. And the business was losing touch with the changing market. And soon after he took office, he emailed every one of the 130,000 people and said that, and this is what his email was, it said, Microsoft existed to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. And so that new mission statement moved it away from we sell software for computers to 
back to focusing on the people. And with that and with everything else, I think in the, the next couple of years, the stock had tripled in value. And it's that understanding and breaking it down to know that no matter what we're trying to do in life, we rely on humans. And so it's being able to see that and understand that and look at it that way is to to achieve some some really big results. So then you you, you also have to understand that you have to your team also expands to your network and your network I guess is defined as the people in your in in your sphere of influence or at least uh, in your reach and that might be you know one person that you know who knows somebody else um, can help you drive your team goal and so the way that I look at this is to see that the person on the person that you might be there to help be able to help you, you've got to also be able to obviously be able to help them. And I mean, first and foremost, you've got to be, a. I think to be successful, you've got to be a good, it, it helps to be a really good person in terms of character, in terms of values, a genuine person. And you want to also then understand that person in your network, you need to, it has to come, it has to come from a genuine place, but you're also, you're really wanting to think, how can I make their life easier? How can I help achieve their goals? And if you put that folk, if you put that hat on and you go into their shoes and have empathy and go, okay, this person, let's say in business, this person would in that role would come up against X, Y, Z in terms of problems or roadblocks or hurdles in his business, her business. And I know how to fix that, or I know how to help that, or I know someone in my network that can go and help them. And you do that almost unconditionally in the hope that it's just goodwill, right? You come to a place of, I'm just wanting to help others. And if it, and every story I have seen on the internet or, or people that I know, the more good you do for the, for the wider community, for your network, for people, it will come back. No one has ever said, oh, I was just too, I did too much for other people and it never, it never came back to me, right? It's the people that don't want to help that just don't get helped themselves. So it is this really beautiful circle of, I will do everything I can to help others and that will come back and filter back to me as well. And then it's also understanding that you create a team, you create those networks in your, in your realm of, of, of influence and connections and it comes also back to culture and that you can create a beautiful team whereby everyone knows their roles, everyone has autonomy, they know they're contributing to the overall outcome. But it's about creating a culture where they are driven to want to help. And I think that that, that happens naturally in, because that is a, a fundamentally a evolutionary trait of the human species is that we're cultural animals. It's in our DNA. We want to be part of a community. We want to be, we want to do good. We want to help that community, however that community is defined. And if it's, you know, the mother's group, if it's, if it's the work group, if it's the, you know, head, the accounts department of some company that you work for, if it's the, the kids at home, whatever, you know, your touch football team, it's a community that you are a part of and people genuinely want to help that community. They want to feel part of that. They don't want to feel ostracized and they want to feel like they're contributing meaningfully. Not to suggest that, and, and it's dropping the ego to think, well, just because someone does a particular job that maybe in society would be deemed more important than someone else's role in that community. The fact is the people in that environment, in that community need to see that and need to expect and just genuinely see that everyone's role is exactly is, is just as important that everyone does their role to their best ability and it's for that community outcome and i think it is because of that evolutionary pull of wanting to contribute to community that is so that's so powerful that's 200,000 years of evolutionary history dna that is drawing us you can't overwrite that that wanting to contribute to community and so you help others they will feel that in, in their DNA, they'll want to help you, right? It is that simple. And then, and it's not surprising as well that if you're building a team or, or a people, if you're building a business, let's say, you, that, that that will trump economic reward over anything. And so you, 
And that's not surprising because currency, the idea of currency exchanging for serv- goods or services for currency has only been around for about 2,000 years. And that is compared to 200,000 years of wanting to be pulled into a community and be part of and be, be – um, and be uh, and wanting to be a valuable member of that community. So it makes sense that you build this sense of culture in the team, you build that sense of trust and that will always outweigh that monetary value. And that's why, you know, you have you, – you, you, anyone listening would know that if you're in a really good job and it's a beautiful culture and someone – on another in another competing company says, "Hey, come over to us. We'll pay you twenty grand more." You more likely go, "Nah, that's okay. It's not worth it because I love it here. This is uh, everything that I want to um, I want to achieve for this team. It's not the personal reward. You need certainly need to get paid and paid pro- appropriately. But the draw, the fundamental reason why you turn up at work is to help the overall team, and that's the culture you want." And so um, that's what I took away from certainly from Ultraman, right? That my the guys in my car, they weren't getting paid. They weren't. There was nothing really in it for them, but they were so keen to help. And they would say to me, "This is as much, you know, they're getting out as much as what I'm getting from them. They're getting out of it." And so they loved being part of that journey. And that, as far as I can see, is this the idea that you do good for others, and it makes you feel good, but it also comes back as well. And they are more ready, willing, and able to give everything that they've got to help you as well. And so that is a huge part of being successful in life, business, sport, is that you firstly need to understand that you can't do it alone, first and foremost. Secondly, you need a team, you need a network to help you propel yourself to success. And then understand that comes back to people and that under, that comes back to community. And you have to tap into that and make them feel a part of your journey, make them feel like they want you and, and have them want you to be successful. And they will and you do good for them in their te- their goals and their life journey. And that will come back in spades for you as well. So that's about it for today. Um, I hope some of that was good. I hope you got something, even if you got one thing out of that. Um, but truly, I think, you know, I still believe I fall back on this position that anything in life is achievable. If you want it, you've got to want it and you've got to build the team and the connections, and the network around it to help you achieve. So good luck. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, if it was worthwhile, send it on to someone that you think would enjoy it as well. And until next time, peace.